Yeah. Well, welcome everyone here to RISE. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's a big honor to have Governor Reiner and the Department of Commerce here. Uh, Governor Reiner was actually here on April 1st when we did our expansion. And at that time, I was able to hear a little bit about his vision. And I honestly believe we are so fortunate to have a governor who has such a great vision for the tech community, for the business community. And with that, I'll turn over to the governor. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you to our business leaders, our community leaders who joined us here today. Thank you for the media for being here. It's an important day, a great step for Illinois' economy. We've got a lot of challenges in our state. No challenge can be overcome unless we are a growth state unless we are pro-great job creation, pro-investment, pro-economic opportunity for everyone here. That's got to be our number one priority. And that's what today's announcement is all about. We're here to sign an executive order. Illinois has been inadequate in our marketing of our state, in the sales uh, efforts for our state, in our promotion of our state, in our creative recruiting efforts and deal structuring, incentive structuring to bring businesses from around the nation to Illinois and from around the world to Illinois. Today, we're going to take a major step to change that. Uh, many of you know we've got every advantage going for us. We've got the hardest working people in America. Uh, we've got the best location of any state. We have every natural advantage. And yet, when you look at where we are today, uh, in, um, um, in December, we were dead last on job creation. In December, we were number 50 out of 50. Last year in America, we created 2.5 million jobs. Illinois lost 3,000 jobs last year. Uh, unacceptable completely complete failure of our system we've got to change that in a dramatic fashion uh, the small the small business rankings uh, give Illinois an F um, we are ranked as number 48 out of 50 states in terms of overall attractiveness for business we have to change this if we're going to grow and create economic opportunity for all our citizens and we could get rising family incomes and greater prosperity for all Today's announcement is about changing that and taking a new level of professionalism and leadership to our business recruiting efforts. What we want to do is form a public-private partnership with the business community to market, sell, and creatively incentivize businesses to come and invest here in Illinois. Now, we proposed legislation to do this last spring. Unfortunately, the legislature decided to um, postpone and, and uh, negate the process, they, and they required that the public-private partnership uh, go away after three years, it would sunset after three years. We have to show dedication and commitment to this effort, and if we're going to recruit superstars for this effort, we can't tell them, well, the organization may disappear in three years. That's not an option. The legislature put, slipped that into the legislation, so we decided to end those negotiations, and now we're taking unilateral action. We can't wait any longer to get our economy growing, and we can get Illinois booming if we do this the right way. So we're going to create a public-private uh, partnership. Uh, we, have, we are now forming a new corporation, a not-for-profit, a C3, tax-deductible corporation. Uh, we're going to call it the Illinois uh, Economic and Business Development Corporation. Um, and that entity will recruit superstar leaders from the business community whose job is to sell, market, creatively promote, and negotiate incentives um, for the state of Illinois to bring businesses here. In the end, every deal that's structured, every recruiting effort done, will be approved by the Department of Commerce. So we will still have checks and balances. This new corporation cannot commit the state or the state taxpayers to any deal. However, they're out there studying the best practices, learning from other states, and traveling the world recruiting businesses here to bring opportunity to us that then the Department of Commerce signs off on uh, in the final analysis. This will be all transparent. All the donors to this, and we have many donors uh, lined up, will be all uh, announced. Uh, this will be transparent. We will uh, have all the board meetings uh, publicly available. This will be a transparent operation. They will not be able to commit the taxpayers of Illinois, <laughs> but their job is to recruit the companies from around the world and around the nation to the state of Illinois for final approval and negotiation by the leaders here at our Department of Commerce. And with that, to go into further detail, I'd like to uh, introduce our next speaker, Jim Schultz, who is our director of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Jim Schultz. <laughs> Good morning. It is a great day for the state of Illinois. Every morning I get up and I put on this lapel pin with the state of Illinois' logo. 
because I'm so proud of this state. There's so many great things about this state. And the leadership of Governor Rauner to create this new private economic development corporation is a leading way for us to make our state competitive again. We've looked at a lot of different practices of other states and what they've done well, and in some cases not done so well. And I think we've learned a lot of good lessons from that. And we've modeled this creation of this new e private economic development corporation upon those best practices and some of the examples on what we can do better from transparency and accountability, et cetera. I think the, the key to this is that we need to leverage the great assets of this state. When I took this position a year ago, uh, I was unaware of some of the complexity of this department. I have roughly 14% of my department dedicated to economic development relative to business creation. I don't think that's adequate. I think we need to do it more efficiently and more effectively. Some of the state regulations, the bureaucracy and red, red tape that require us to do things in a different way, accountable to the taxpayers, makes this for a new, a be better way to do business in the 21st century. We look forward to the opportunity to bring jobs back to the state, to be competitive again, to move our numbers up, to get the A rating that we deserve, that we should have because of the great assets. I think the greatest asset we have is the one the governor pointed out, and that is our workforce. I've traveled throughout the country and invested in companies throughout the country, and Illinois is the greatest workforce in the country, if not the world. And I, I think the attributes are the well-educated, they're easily trained, and they're loyal to, to the employer, to the community, and to the state. And so I want to build upon that and make this the greatest state we can make it. This is a great day for all of us, and I think over the next few months you'll see a lot more evolve out of this, and we'll look forward to updating you as we develop this new Illinois Business and Economic Development Corporation. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Angela Griffin, the chairperson of the Illinois Economic Development Association. Angela? Thank you, Director Schultz. It's my pleasure to be here sharing this day with all of you. The Illinois Business and Economic Development Corporation was created based on need and listening to the voices of businesses and economic development organizations across Illinois. My community and many others like mine have already created private economic development organizations and they're working in the state and we're beginning to see the benefits. Throughout Illinois, this model is proven effective in marketing and attracting businesses and retaining the ones that we have in our communities. We have seen the impact on the local level, but the network of local economic development organizations across the state of Illinois need a leader at the state level and a partner to take the lead for us in this effort. The new Illinois Business of Economic and Development, the new Illinois Business Economic and Development Corporation is based on best practices, as Jim indicated, of other states and local economic development organizations and will apply those best practices to Illinois as a whole. On behalf of my community and the Economic Development Association and the economic developers of Illinois that I represent, I look forward to working with the Illinois Business and Economic Development Corporation and attracting new businesses, new investment, and new jobs to Illinois. And now it's my pleasure to introduce another partner in business development, Matt Gams with the Illinois State Chamber. Uh, on behalf of the Illinois Chamber of Commerce and our members, uh, we applaud the action the governor is taking today. We believe that to make Illinois the great place it is, it starts with making Illinois' economy great. Uh, we've looked around as our peers, not just around the region, but around the country, and have seen this private, not-for-profit model be a successful way for businesses, B2B, to communicate with each other, tell their experiences, talk about what's great about their state, and move the, the needle forward. It is not just about job creation, it's about developing career paths for people that make them believe this is the best place in the country for them, which those of us who already call this home and do business here every day know in our bones. And we very much applaud this move. Mr. Governor. Thank you. All right. Now we'll have the formal signing here of the uh, executive order, creating the Illinois uh, Business and Economic Development Corporation partnership, formalizing the partnership requiring the Department of Commerce to work closely with this new corporation. I'm going to try to use every pen here so everybody gets a takeaway. <laughs>
There we go. Thank you all very much, and I've got some mementos here. You can't get these at Walmart. <laughs> You should get one too. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everybody. So now, uh, with that, we'll answer questions. Governor, what, what section of the economy would you say is ripe for the most job creation right now in Illinois? Um, you know, one of the wonderful things about Illinois is we can compete in virtually every sector of the American economy in every sector of the world economy. We have the people and the location and the infrastructure to compete everywhere. Huge opportunity in the technology sector, huge opportunity in the food sector, huge opportunity in the consumer goods sector, huge opportunity in manufacturing, transportation, logistics, healthcare, education. We have the opportunity to thrive in every sector of the American economy, and that's going to be our goal. What Governor Rauner, what model? specific legal authority are you citing in your attempt to take over the uh, Chicago Public Schools? Well, can, um, I want to come back to that. Can we talk about this for a few minutes, and then we'll come come to other issues? Governor, Governor what, what can what can they, what can this not do that the old plan, the full privatization of DCO, could do? What's the difference between the, bill the biggest and difference? Is this isn't going to die in three years? It can't be subject to the political political games that the legislature is attempting to play with this. We need a long term, big, sustained commitment to business investment, business recruiting and development and uh, retention, and that's what this is going to create. But why did you, why did you this need group a bill? Out there, with this group out negotiating deals that are <clears throat> subject to DECO approval, how do you make sure they don't, in effect, don't become effectively a state agency, that the DECO is really oversighting rather than just rubber stamping? Um, well, they're, they're, have their, they're going to have their own independent board. They're going to have their own independent donors. Uh, their own independent management, and they're going to make their decisions. The, it's going to have a checks and balances. The Department of Commerce, in the end, is going to approve every transaction, every deal, every incentive, every, every uh, uh, comprehensive package. But this organization will be able to be creative, aggressive, and unlimited in terms of their creativity. Okay, but, if, but if these guys come in with a deal, it's going to be real hard for DECO to say no, isn't it? No, not at all. We, 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 uh, we're going to have uh, everything be transparent. Um, the new corporation is going to be able to just go out and be as aggressive and creative and recruit the people that they need to at whatever salaries they need to pay. They won't be encumbered by the bureaucracy and the limitations that, that government is, has to operate under. But in the end, every deal, every transaction that binds the taxpayers and the people of Illinois will be approved by the Department of Commerce and they will make their own decisions. Well, yes, sir. As, as this group goes out and does recruiting, how important do you think the elements of the turnaround agenda will be? Things like term limits, things like redistricting reform, uh, curtailment of local public sector union, collective bargaining on certain elements to get a, a property tax freeze, the kinds of things you've been talking about. How important will that be to this group? Well, uh, we can't sell. We're not going to sell what we can't deliver. We're going to sell what we can sell right now, which is incredible people incredible location, incredible infrastructure, we're going to sell what we can sell right now. We can always do better selling what we've got. In the end, the reason we're pushing our turnaround agenda so aggressively, if we got the elements of that agenda done, our sales pitch, uh, our sales pitch to uh, businesses would be overwhelmingly successful. I know, I've talked to dozens of businesses who are eager to come here, they're waiting to see if we can make progress on our turnaround agenda. We will never give up on it, we're going to push it hard because we'll have more success with this new corporation than we've had, but we can take it to a whole new level and instead of being one of the worst five states for economic growth, we can be one of the best five states for economic growth. That is totally doable with our turnaround agenda combined with this corporation. Well, see, they've made some mistakes, and we, you know what? I believe in benchmarking and learning, studying what others do, and, and uh, emulating success, avoiding where they've made mistakes, and then trying to take it to another level of excellence. <coughs> Wisconsin allowed their corporation to um, make commitments. Um, some of those were not transparent, and it, it, it uh, ends up causing trouble. We are n we're going to avoid a lot of the structural mistakes that Wisconsin made. What states? Um, well, Jim could talk. We, I know I've personally looked at a half a dozen, and we've, we, we frankly, we look at every state. What are they doing on economic development? What are they not doing? We've Which looked at all kinds. 
Well, let's be clear. Um, Texas, Tennessee are booming. South Carolina's booming. Ohio's done some very good things. Michigan's done some very good things. The, the number of states are outperforming us in pretty dramatic fashion, and there's really no excuse for it. We've got better people. We've got a better location. We've got better infrastructure. We should be kicking their tails, and instead they're doing that to us. That's we're going to change that. We are Probably absolutely going to change that. I have two. One is will this uh, corporation be subject to FOIA, and the other? Yes. The answer is yes. It will be. Yes. Uh, I think it is. I'm not sure. But it, they're going to be subject to FOIA. Okay. And then also you mentioned that there, this, this, this arrangement will free them of bureaucracy. Yes. Can you kind of get in, explain what bureaucracy is corporation? Well, you know, um, we have limits. We, the, the way we compensate, recruiting people is a nightmare inside state government. There are bumping restrictions. There are salary limitations. There's, there's a, um, a, a forced process that only certain people, uh, if there's a job opening, only certain people already in the system with certain seniority can apply. We want the best and the brightest, most creative deal structurers in the world to come here. They're not going to go through that baloney. That running our state government with the restrictions we've got around recruiting talent is almost impossible. And this is going to free us up from a lot of that. Governor, when you look at the political uncertainty uh, around the budget and the uncertainty around the state's largest school system, isn't that anti-business? I'm sorry, say it again. The, the uncertainty, the, the, the political situation, the uncertainty over the uh, over the politics of the budget and the, the state's largest school system, the uncertainty there, doesn't that drive business away? Um, you know what? The business community around the state and around the nation is applauding our efforts. Ch they understand that change is hard. Change is hard. Change takes time. They know that Illinois needs big change, and they're cheering for us. And they are so eager to see us succeed in our turnaround agenda, and they want to come here and invest here. I'm very excited about the possibilities if we can get it done. Do you know who's going to chair the board? Um, the board is, we, right now, it's, uh, it's an interim board because we just set it up, and it's be, uh, composed of Department of Commerce and, uh, and Economic Opportunity personnel. That board is then going to be selected by donors as well as DCEO people once we get it solidified with our initial donor base. Would you be on it? Um, it's to be decided. I could. I will be very involved, whether I'm not on the board or not. It doesn't really matter. I'll be very involved. What would, be the, what would be the specific metrics or goals by which you would assess uh, the success of this board or this entity? Well, in the end, our, our whole, my whole success of our administration is whether Illinois moved into the top 10 states of economic growth or not. That's, that'll be the ultimate measure of our success. We can do that. It's hard. It's going to take a little time, but we can do that. But here, every year, we're going to set goals of how many companies we've recruited, how many jobs have we brought from other states and from other nations here to Illinois. We're going to measure that and report on it on a constant basis. <laughs> Uh, millions of dollars. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, scale this as donors make capital available. We've got initial uh, discussions underway for millions of dollars annually to start it off. And that'll be salaries and travel? Yes, all of that. If you move into the top ten, what would that mean for the state in terms of either increased employment or increased tax revenue for the state? Well, it's, it's billions of dollars. I mean, if, if we, in fact, when we have our budget address in a couple weeks, we're going to talk about that. If we had instituted our turnaround agenda 15 years ago, and if we'd done this 15 years ago, we'd have billions of additional tax revenues right now coming into the state without the tax hike the uh, that was put in. What would it mean for private sector employment growth? Well, again, you could look, if, if right now we, our job creation uh, trajectory is way below the national average. If we moved up um, uh, to the national average, we're talking hundreds of thousands of more jobs. And if we moved into the top 10 states, states like Texas and others, which we can totally compete with, there is no reason, none, that the state of Texas should be outperforming us like they are. No reason. Yes, sir. Governor, on, an, on another topic, um, why won't your administration approve added to the medical marijuana program? Um, we, we've got to just see how this program goes. We're assessing the performance of it so far, and then we'll make that judgment in the future. But we're, I don't want to rush this. We're m making a lot of changes. We, we gotta, we've got to walk before we run. Oh, are, you ready? Governor, are you ready to have schools? Uh, is, are, is, are we off of this subject? Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> no, we got some more over here. Yeah. Uh, Governor, good morning. Good morning. Still Very much so. We have, we have many consuls general fr uh, from around uh, the world here with us today. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I am personally committed, as you know, I've met with, many, with you many times. 
there's an opportunity for the state of Illinois to be one of the most important economic partners, trading partners in the world with each of your countries. When you look at O'Hare Airport, when you look at the infrastructure around North, Northeast Illinois with our infrastructure and our location in the center of America, we can be one of the most important international trading partners for America with each of your nations. And I'm personally committed to trying to make that happen. Governor, you're another, another subject. Uh, the mayor's people are saying that you're trying to sabotage the torpedo, uh, the bond issue that is needed to, to keep CPS open through the rest of the year, are you? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, I believe that City Hall flailing and floundering and failing and looking to blame others for it. Uh, the numbers don't lie. CPS has been a financial disaster for years. The balance sheet is stunningly bad. And now they're looking at borrowing. Um, more money to cover operations. Borrowing to cover operations is basically tax and delayed. That is tax and delayed. And they're not, we're not, this is kicking the can. This is not solving the problem. I've encouraged the mayor to get structural reform. So far he's refused. So far he's looking to kick the can and borrow and cover up. He's proposed an unaffordable contract and even that got uh, re rejected by the union. Uh, I recommended to the mayor so the, mayors, the mayors of Chicago starting six years ago that bankruptcy be looked at as an option for CPS. I believe when you look at the fundamental structure and the liabilities of, of that institution and you compare it to the tax base and where the tax rates would have to go and how punishing that would be to homeowners in Chicago, it's stunning. And what I can never allow, I work for all the taxpayers of Illinois. I work for the taxpayers of Chicago. I work for the taxpayers of the state. We cannot allow the mayor and some of his friends inside the legislature to come up with a structure to force liabilities off onto other taxpayers in the suburbs. We cannot allow that. We've already had suburban taxpayers subsidizing Chicago public schools for years. We cannot allow um, a, a, a transfer of those liabilities outside the city of Chicago. Bankruptcy, along with a proper negotiation process with a leader who will stand up and fight for taxpayers will result in both the school staying open, no layoffs. I don't think that we should have to lay off a teacher if this is structured properly. We can protect our children and their education and still protect taxpayers, and that's what we're pushing Governor, to do. What you, like, what you proposed up, yesterday was, is a, a whole series of short-term pain for the Chicago Public Schools. Uh, as it fits into your turnaround agenda looking down the road. But I don't recall when you campaigned that you talked about de devolving uh, Chicago schools, blowing it up and starting over. Uh, this comes as almost like something Scott Walker might have done. What's the, what's I'm, the so, I'm, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, yesterday I didn't say about blowing up Chicago public schools. I want to keep every school open keep every teacher employed. I'd like to upgrade our teacher core quality over the, in the coming years, and there's ways we can do that. But there's no way we have to uh, have teacher layoffs. That should never occur. We need every possible teacher we can have to help the children of Chicago. You're talking about, a, uh, in effect, a destruction of, this, of the current way the Chicago Public Schools is managed and run, and then taken over by the state, and with, with no new, new revenue source. So, in effect, you're talking about blowing up the school system to... to no, that's, those are your words. Absolutely not true. How do you describe so, 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 Illinois already has in the law the ability for the state to take over financially broken school districts. And the state has already done it, I think, in seven different school districts. But there's no okay? support for that. So, 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 I'm sorry? But there's no support for that piece of legislation that would mm -hmm. enable that. Um, let's be clear. The uh, president of the Senate has spoken out against it. He's from Chicago. Um, the, the legislators who are from Chicago will speak out against it. Um, when the time comes, many Democratic legislate, legislators are not from Chicago. They're from the suburbs, and they're from Quincy, and they're from Decatur. And you know what? When their voters understand what's been going on and the subsidies that state taxpayers around, are, around Illinois have been funding CPS, and now that we can protect them and from the mayor trying to force off a half billion dollars liabilities on them, you watch, you watch what Democratic legislators around the state who are not from Chicago like the speaker and the president are, you're going to see that that bill, that bill is not dead on arrival like some are trying to claim. Just, just a second, just a second, Marianne. Governor, wouldn't you, wouldn't you concede that what you've just outlined goes along with what Rich Miller suggested today? If you could scare off the bond buyers, and if you could cause CPS to miss a bond payment as a result of that, that would propel them toward bankruptcy. That would make it easier for you to get those downstate legislatures to 
join you in having a takeover of the CPS system. So whether you're intending that or not, wouldn't you concede it kind of looks that way? Not at all. I, I've said bankruptcy. I've been in the public record. I've been in public events talking about bankruptcy for CPS for years. And this says what bond bondholders will make their own decisions. I don't interact with them. I don't talk to them. Frankly, I don't much care about them one way or another. What I care about is the school children of Chicago so their education is protected and I care about the taxpayers of Illinois including the taxpayers of Chicago. That's who I work for and that's who I'm going to fight for and everything that we're advocating today protects them and protects our school children. How soon does it appear to you that CPS is going to run out of money? I don't know. You know CPS has been particularly, uh, what's a nice word for it, <laughs> opaque about their financial condition for years. They've been, they've been uh, chicken little screaming the sky's falling for years. I don't know what to believe. When I do my own analysis from what limited information I can access, I don't see how CPS gets through their current financial condition without either completely unaffordable tax hikes that would devastate the city or through a bankruptcy. And I don't want to see Chicago devastated. I don't want to see Chicago homeowners crushed by new taxes. And the mayor's people are already starting to come out. I, I, I was told that in this bond offering document, they're already starting to be honest that they're, they're looking at a, another $200 million tax hike on top of the other 588 or whatever it was. And you, if we don't change the structure of Chicago and the structure of Illinois, taxpayers, homeowners, small business owners in this city and in this state are looking at crushing tax increases. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg, and I want to prevent that. The mayor so far has refused to work with me. If you look at what I proposed to the mayor last summer, last summer I proposed to the mayor a comprehensive resolution. Everything that he's wrestling with right now would have been dealt with and fixed. Everything. And you study what I proposed last summer. The mayor rejected it. He said no to any structural reform. He said, what I want you to do, just send a half billion cash and leave me alone. That's not going to happen. That will not happen. That will not happen. And those who say, well, we'll figure out, we'll get more money somehow. We'll get that one speaker, the speaker or the president say, we'll get somehow get more money for Chicago. They, they are speaking to you. They're not talking to the voters in their districts. They got to know that their caucus members work in the end for the voters in their districts. Governor, Governor, you've talked a lot about local control. The authority that you envision, the new superintendent that would be in charge of things, would these be people from within the corporate limits of Chicago? Uh, that would certainly be my first choice when we select a new superintendent, it would be a Chicago person. In the end, what I've recommended is we have the state take over the system, we have bankruptcy as an option, I want to protect the teachers in their jobs, some compensation may have to be adjusted, but I want to protect it in their jobs. Um, I'd like them, I won't go into the detail of specifics yet, we can talk about that later. But we, we would have an interim board and an interim superintendent. But then what I would like to do and what we've recommended is once we're done getting the financial structure into an affordable place, turn it back over to the people of Chicago with an elected school board, not a mayoral control school board anymore, but to make sure that we limit the teachers union ability to completely control and dominate that school board like they did for decades. It's one of the reasons that the system's been run into the ground like it has been. I, uh, um, well, what's, what can I say? First of all, I'm the most persistent person on the planet. I will never give up in terms of getting structural reform, and I will never give up trying to have compromise. Working out a win-win scenario that includes compromise, I will always work with the mayor. Our, our team, my team, and the mayor's team are in almost daily communication. Uh, same thing with the president's office. We are working to try and get compromise. Everything's on the table, but we've got to protect our taxpayers. We've got to restore the balance. Right now, insiders in government, the groups that make their money from the taxpayers, are up here with the power in the state, and taxpayers are down here. We've got to change the system so we're here. That's what everything that we're pushing on is about. And I will work with the mayor to get that done in any regard. Uh, I care deeply about, I work for everybody in Chicago. I care deeply about the school children in Chicago. I want the best schools in America for them, and I do not want any teacher to lose his or her job. Is, requiring one more, is, one yes. more. is that a yes then to picking up the regular cost of pension? The I'm sorry, I, I didn't connect the two things. What, what? Just following up on, on uh, 
the previous question. Uh, does that mean you're saying yes, you are still willing to uh, have the state pick up the regular cost of pensions? For Everything that I've proposed, I'm willing to continue to support and pursue in negotiations. The, the critical issue is we get a broad restructuring of the state and reform so we can get taxpayers' um, voices with equal uh, weight in the state rather than government insiders. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it.